So our next speaker, Jane Onahen, is, from, is originally from Nigeria. Jane is an author, has worked as a social worker, community volunteer, and human services for, for many years. Jane is now a professional speaker and storyteller using factual history in, her entertain, in entertaining her audience as one, as one performer. Jane has been in public services for over two decades. Jane has ma a master's degree in counseling psychology from Capella University in Minneapolis. She's got a degree in economics from the U University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria, with a minor in education. Jane enjoys writing children's books in her spare time and has written several poems and enjoys reading a great deal. Jane uses historical and factual performances as presented by historical fact on the contributions of women to human development from long ago and how she endeavors to change history and contribute, contributed to human civilization is often the focus of her stories. Jane brings back to life voices of individual women long forgotten in the fight and liberation of women and women's suffrage. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Queen Adila, mother of Obaga, Oba Isagi. Isigi. afternoon and welcome. I am so glad you were able to come and I'm so happy to see all these happy faces. My name is Queen Idia, the mother of Obai Esigye of ancient Bini Empire. You may not know it, I lived 500 years ago. I lived from the 14th to the 15th century. You may not know it either. In my days, women were properties of their husbands. Because in my culture, it was okay for a man to marry as many women as they wanted. It was the culture. It was a way of life. And everyone accepted that. The women were given voices by God but they were never allowed to use it because they belonged to the man. I did not quite like that, and I tended to make a difference. You might be surprised at what a difference I made because as I grew up, I decided I was going to become one of the best women in town. But I'm from a small village. The first thing I did was to join a dancing troupe that entertained the rich and the famous. System. I did, and guess what? The monarch noticed me, a beautiful young lady, and he decided I would become one of his wives in his harem. If he knew what he was getting into, he would never have done that. Because at the end of the day, I took over power. I became the ruling monarch. How did I do this effectively? The moment the Oba told my parents that he was interested in me as a wife, and, I and you must know again at the time, once the monarch says, that is my wife, believe it don't, you become his wife. No contest. <laughs> so it turned out I became his wife. And from that moment on, my parents decided to train me, help me, do everything they could to ensure that the life ahead of me, which was going to be lonely and difficult, the palace life, I understand what it was, and I was prepared to take my, to accept my role. Because once I go in there, I'm never coming out. That's what happened to all the women. I'm never going to see my father again, ever, my uncles, my brothers, my friends, because the wife of the monarch never, never come out in public or see me. The only person I'll likely see is my mother or my sisters. So, I was ready. 
You see this that I have here? It was specially made for me, for when I go to the palace. I did not know it then. It was part of the preparation. I was going to use this star in winning the biggest war that I fought in. You see, my son, who became the monarch, was the third in row for the kingship. I manipulated, positively though, not negatively, to ensure that my son, who, wo- who, never, who would never have dreamt of becoming the ruler, came to the throne. How did I do that? I made my husband send the second son as an ambassador to the next country. You see, and the first son had an accident. I had nothing to do with it at all. Don't blame that on me. And he became crippled. That's not my fault. So, my son took over the kingship after my husband died. That his older brother was very powerful. He started a war, a revolution. I took over the army. I made myself the chief of staff of the army, a, over 10,000 men. I quenched him off. And then there was another uprising from another country. Because you see, my kingdom stretches all the way from the east, from the river Niger, all the way to the old Songhai Empire, and to the, to the north and the northwest. It was a huge kingdom. They too decided to, roi- uh, to, to riot and started a war. This war was so big and so huge. I gathered all the missionaries, all the white men, and that was the first woman to learn how to shoot a gun. And I taught the techniques to all my armies. I make sure after that, that women's voices were heard. Before my time, the woman who becomes the mother of the Oba were killed because they thought that way the Oba would not be partial. I did not want to die. Uh-uh, not me. I stopped that too. I stopped women from being betrothed to very, very old men. I stopped the slave trade in my kingdom. None of my subjects were sold into slavery. I refused. I told the, um, the Portuguese who came looking for slaves, if they buy any slave in my kingdom, they will be banished and they will be put to death. They knew me very well. They understand me. So they did not buy a slave or started any problem in my kingdom. Also, I sent my son to school to the Portuguese school, so he will understand their ways. So my son learned to speak Portuguese, spoke English fluently, and spoke my language fluently. I did a lot of good things. But you see, there is not enough time to tell you all about it. But I'm looking forward to a time and place where I will have enough time to give you more information about my life. That will be a thing to look forward to. I'm so glad you came, and thank you for listening to me.